What's going on, y'all? It is your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are here for the season, the new season of Marriage Boot Camp, y'all. This is a hip hop edition. I want to say season 13, 14, something like that. I don't know. I'll put it up right about here, y'all. This is going to be Marriage Boot Camp, hip hop edition, season 13, 14, something like that, y'all. Before we get into this review, as always, church announcements. If you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to your Auntie channel. I'm going to give you all that good shit over here. Before you leave, also let me know that you stopped by and give me a thumbs up or thumbs down and then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content, y'all. Um, I got my nails done. Y'all like this color? This color is popping. I was like, oh, let me do a little blue or something like that, y'all. I got my little peach banana. Not to say peach banana. It's a banana mango green tea, y'all. I have been slamming this green tea. This green tea is off the rip. But, um... This first episode was good. I think I'm going to enjoy this season. Um, one of y'all, a couple of y'all out there asked me would I review this season of it. And I thought to myself, yeah, because one of my favorite people on there is Justin Hernandez. So, of course, y'all already know I'm doing Justin's cast, uh, Cabaret if you don't follow me already. <laughs> you need to be watching that review as well. But, um, y'all, I don't want to waste no more time. Hopefully, y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So, let's get right on up into it. So, we are introduced to the couple, y'all. First to arrive to the house are Jocelyn Hernandez and Ballistic. We already know what their issues are. Like I said, if you watch Jocelyn's Cabaret, the review that I do on that, you already know this nigga say he want to get married on the moon, a.k.a. He ain't trying to get married no goddamn time soon. So we already know that's what their little issue is, whatever, right? Next, oh, and they've been together for two years. Um, next up, we have Styles P and his wife, Ajwa. They've been married um, for 24 years. She says that there is no romance, no bing bang pow, no sparks, no nothing in the relationship. Their relationship is super boring and... She's ready for a change. You know, she's ready to change that shit up. Um, the next couple to come into the house, before they even get in there, you hear these niggas arguing in the damn Jeep as they pulling up. As soon as they pull up, they get up out the car shot. It's Bianca Bonnie and um, her boyfriend, Chosen. As y'all don't know who Bianca Bonnie is, uh, you don't know who Bianca Bonnie is. She a little girl that's seen the chicken noodle soup with the soda on the side. Let it rain and clear it out. And let it rain and clear it out. That little girl, let's get it, let's get it. Yeah, her. Her and her boyfriend, Chosen, they've been together. She she says for a year. He says 10 months. We'll get into that for a minute. Um, Next up to come to the house, we have Misha Lay and her boyfriend. Oh, no. Let me back up real quick. Bianca Bonnie and her boyfriend, Chosen, their issues are they always fighting and getting into it and arguing and they childish as hell. That's what the issues are. Michelle Lay and her boyfriend, Stu, have been together, I think she said, for a few months, 10 months or something like that. Their issues are he feels like she's always trying to pawn him off on other women. She feels like he's unattentive and he's unattractive. He really does not want to be with her, and he's not really attracted to her. It's something weird about their whole relationship. I was reading, no, who, no, who was I watching? I was watching somebody else's channel. They were doing a review. I can't remember who it was. But they said something like, um, supposedly Michelle and her boyfriend Stu is a fake couple. They not even for real on here. They just fake being a couple to get on the show. I can't remember who it was. If I remember whose video it was that I was watching, I'm going to leave it down in the description box below. Because I just started following her not too, not too long ago. And she is funny as hell if it's who I am thinking it is. But, um... Yeah, their relationship is weird any damn way, y'all. And the last to arrive in the house is CeeLo Green and his fiance Shawnee. They've been together for eight years, been engaged for five years. Their issues are um, communication, issues in the past, which I'm thinking is infidelity, and um, a power struggle. Both of them want to be in control. So all the couples get to the house. They all chopping it up. They all talking, you know, getting to know each other, you know, just asking questions about each other's relationship. They get on the subject of, um, you know, men and women got to be in this together because the women were saying stuff like the men don't know how to communicate, yada, yada, whoop de whoop. Then they get on the subject of black love. Bianca Bonnie is like, yeah, you hear that shows in black love. A black man needs to be with a black woman, black love. Well, come to find out, she says that he cheated on her with a white woman. Either he cheated on her or they were on a break. And either way it go, he went with a white woman. And so that's another part of, of some resentment or some anger that she's holding on to or whatever. But 
child. They're cute together, though. They're real cute together. They, both of them is chocolatey and real, real cute. I like Bianca Bunny. She got a little mouth on her. <laughs> My daddy and them people is from New York. I don't know if that's why I like her, because it's the New York in me that really like her, but I really like her. So, y'all, as all the couples are sitting up there, chopping it up, getting to know one another, they sitting there throwing back drinks left and right, they start hearing a bunch of applause. Me, Charlay, is like, oh, I'm going to get up and see what that is. I need to be lousy. She get up and she goes to the back to see what that is, child, and it's a it's a, like a big ass crowd or whatever right and dr ish is standing on the stage and it looks like it's an award ceremony so everybody goes and they sit sit there you know little respective tables that they're at the front everybody's like what the fuck is going on with this who is this whole little audience that y'all has? Was y'all niggas listening to us talking the whole goddamn time? Like, what the hell is this going on? Now, this particular awards show is for them, and it's not really a, a good thing that the awards that they're getting is. It's kind of a description of each one of their, you know, issues in their relationship or whatever, right? First up to get an award was the most turned up. That ended up going to Bianca Bonnie and her boyfriend, Chosen, because, again, he says that this heifer took a $200 Uber to go fight a bitch that he thought she she was messing around with or that she thought he was messing around with which she probably was two hundred dollars for an uber i mean goddamn you you better have had caught something god i mean goddamn that's too much i'm not gonna waste on two hundred dollars on the uber to go whoop no bitch ass oh no no i wait for that nigga to come home and i two piece in a biscuit his ass but i'm not gonna go um no i'm not gonna do all of that Child, just then, as they going up there taking that little award, guess who pops out? Judge Lynn Toller. Now, Judge Lynn Toller is one of them judges that <laughs> she break you down. She kind of like Iyanla. Like, the bitch bring feelings out of you. How you feeling sorry for yourself for some shit that you done already forgiven yourself for? Or she'll bring up some shit that you done purposely tried to forget about and she just make you feel some shit, right? And so, they were sitting up there talking to them and so Dr. Ish asked Bianca Bunny, like, how long you think this nigga finna put up with you putting your hands on him? Because she done went upside this nigga head a couple times too. And he like, yup, you need to get it together. So Judge Lynn told us, telling her like, look here, baby, you need to understand, you know. You good enough and you got to love yourself and you got to seek the happiness within yourself. Child, she was breaking Bianca down. All that hard chicken noodle soup with a soda on the side exterior that she had, baby, that shit broke the hell down. And she started crying and she started to show her little vulnerability. And it was, it was beautiful. It was shown up beautiful. And the nigga was there to comfort her and be like, baby, look here, look, I'm I'm here, I'm with you, I'm riding, I'm thugging this thing out. I was like, go ahead, chocolate and chocolate E. I like that. Next up, the award was FOMO, fear of missing out. They ended up going to Misha Lay and Stu. Reason being is again, she feels like he doesn't really love her. He doesn't really want to be with her. He's not attracted to her. She feels like he is attracted to a totally different type of woman, which if you feel that way, why are you even with this nigga? Their relationship really don't make sense to me. Now, Dr. Ish is saying, I understand, you know, you done been with men in your past and done made it hard for you to, you know, ever fall in love and this and that and the other, but you can't be blaming this nigga for the issues that you done had with niggas in the past, whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. He talking about Dr. Dre. I mean, damn, that was so long ago that she was with Dre. I understand, you know, you can't erase the past. It's still a part of her present and stuff like that, but damn, you ain't been with nobody else besides Dre after Dre? And everybody else she was with was just like Dre. I mean, that ain't my business. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But Judge Toller, break, you know, breaks it down to her and also breaks it down to his ass too. Like, look here, you got to prove to her that you can be the nigga that she been used to. You ain't finna be that nigga. You finna be somebody totally else or whatever, y'all. Again, their relationship is kind of emoji sign. The next award was Unlit. That went to Styles P and his wife, Ajwa. Um, <laughs> obviously unlit she says it ain't nothing been popping off and and they're born and he was you know he understood that and he actually took responsibility for it he was like look here you know i put that on me i don't put forth no effort to do nothing so it is what it is but he done made a vow he finna get that old thing back he finna get it popping up in there uncle styles p said i'm finna get it pop, pop, popping up in here i ain't mad at you nigga Next was ill communicated, and that went to CeeLo Green and his fiance Shawnee because she says that he doesn't like to be controlled. He, of course, said he doesn't want to be controlled. She just tries to tell him advice that she feels like is going to help him. He doesn't see it that way. He sees that as her trying to control him. Y'all, they, y'all already know CeeLo is on a whole other planet. 
of his own, okay? Can't nobody <laughs> reach the planet that this nigga on. But she been thugging it out with his ass for eight years. So, obviously, they got they got some real kind of love. They just can't communicate. I, it, he seemed like he'd be a difficult nigga to communicate with. Because while he's talking about astrological shit, you trying to talk about, you know, regular grounded shit. About, okay, this is what we can do right here. You know, right then and there and now. But... They know that they got issues that they got to work on. They got to work on the whole communication thing and, and all of that. Y'all, last stuff was ride or die. And that went to Jocelyn and Ballistic. But this is the thing, right? Okay, so again, y'all know Jocelyn wants to get married. Ballistic is, he like, hold on, slow down. I'm trying to take my time with that. This is the reason being. At first, I'm just thinking like this nigga didn't want to commit. He got a valid fucking reason. So... He's like, you know, I get up every morning. I make sure your baby is straight. She's ready. She's good to go to school. I make both of y'all breakfast. I take care of the house. I'm out trying to produce music for you, do this for you, whoop de whoop, yada, yada, yada. At that same time, I'm going to need you to act like a queen and calm your ass down, pump your damn brakes, and not expect for everything to just be your way, all the way, any way you want it. Like this ain't Burger King around this bitch. You got to be willing to compromise. Her whole thing is you need, you should be proud to be with somebody like me. That's the least you could do is get my baby together. You supposed to be doing this and this and that for me. Now, Johnson, I get it. You a bad bitch and, and you don't want to settle for less. But at the same time, girl, this whole little, the baddest little boosh, you going to miss out on your blessings like that. That's all I'm saying. No, I got to break it down to you and be real. You already know. You my bitch. But at the same time, that mouth, all of this, this, this attitude, whoop de whoop doop doop you gonna miss out on a good thing because Ballistic love your ass. But the way she coming at this nigga sideways, he ain't finna put up with that. He ain't gonna do it. Y'all at the little award show or whatever, everybody's sitting around a the pool, they chopping it up, you know, just talking about what their particular awards were that they got and how that matched their relationship and how they felt it was either, you know, fitting for them or it wasn't fitting for them. At this time, child, Bianca Body and her boyfriend, Z I keep on calling this nigga Yeezus, Zizus, Zuzus, shows us. That's his name. Shows us. Lord, chose us. That's what it's. C H O Z U S. Chose us. That's what it is. I need to know this nigga real name because I'm just not gonna keep on remembering that. Anyways, her and her boyfriend sitting up there, they playing around. Child, he ends up throwing her in the pool. Like some big ass kids, child. Well, they actually throw each other in the damn pool. They sitting over here playing in the damn pool. Meanwhile, you got all the adults over here and having a damn adult conversation. Now, while they over here talking, they bring up, um, well, Misha Lay brings up how she felt like FOMO wasn't really fitting for her and Stu. He's like, I don't understand, like, why you steady trying to push me off on other women and, and why you feel like I want other women. Now, mind you, this nigga Stu has been taking these goddamn drinks back. So this nigga is good and tipsy. It is funny as hell. It is funny as hell. She says in a way she feels guilty, like she's keeping him away from other women because she's so much older than him. She feels like she could be in the way of him missing out on the opportunity of being with other women. Again, I don't understand that. I, oh, I, somebody help me to understand that. Their relationship don't make sense to me, y'all. It just really don't make sense to me. So, y'all, everybody goes and then checks out their rooms and see what their room's looking like, y'all. Um, who was that? Who went first? So, Misha and Stu, they went to their room. Their room was set up with pictures of all different women all over the room, supposedly of women that she feels like are more his type, that he would want to be with, that he should be with. It's stupid. It's just real stupid. Then um, Jocelyn and Ballistic, they have their room. It's one big-ass bed, like one romantical bed. Then there's two single beds, like a friend zone, Re meaning, you know, basically, they, they friends, they it's cool, this, that, and the other, but then again, at the same time, they want to be committed... I, I mean, I got it, but I didn't really get the room. You know, it is what it was. Um, Bianca Biden and her boyfriend shows us Jesus, Beezus, whatever his name is. Their room was a boxing ring. Now, I honestly feel like they had the best damn room because anytime you met each other, you know, nigga, let's go put these goddamn gloves and this hat on and this knuckle up and do this goddamn thing because, you know, my motherfucking nerves. It was a cute little room that they shit the way they were set up. So, CeeLo and Shiny, their room, half of the room was like a Buddha, real zen and yum, and get your thoughts and shit together. That was one half of the room, supposed to be like CeeLo, right? The other half of the room was real business. It was real, like, 
sort of boring, like just real, real business-like and like real clean cut and straight to the point. Supposedly supposed to be shiny side, meaning that she ain't with the fuckery or nothing. I, I, I got business and shit that I'm trying to talk to your ass about, but you'd rather go meditate with some goddamn frankincense and myrrh and I'm trying to tell your ass something. That's what it seemed like to me. And then lastly, you have Styles P and his wife Aja's room. It was dull. It was drab. It was boring. It was unlit. It looked like a bunch of burnt up shit in there. It just looked real dull and drab and boring. And again, he vowed that he finna get that old flame back and he finna get it popping up in that bedroom. Y'all let on Stu throwing up. That nigga caught up with his goddamn ass. You could tell that nigga was drunk. I mean, he was taking back two, three, four, eight, nine goddamn shots and drinks and shit. I'm like, that little boy body can't handle all that. Y'all, and then we have Jocelyn once again giving Ballistic an ultimatum. Like, look here. We gonna get married by the end of this show. It's either ride or die. Either we gonna get married, we gonna ride out, or we gonna die, and we ain't gonna be together. Listen, like, look here, you can't put no ultimatum on me on what the hell I'm going to do. I'm a grown-ass man. I'm going to do what the hell I do when the hell I want to goddamn do it. And, y'all, that was the end of the episode right there. <laughs> this first episode was good. Just, you know, introducing the couples and seeing what everybody got to offer. It wasn't a whole lot of action that went on. Oh, but it looked like it's going to be some shit shit in the next couple of episodes, y'all. If y'all seen it, if it was anything that I missed, y'all already know, drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's going on, y'all? Look here. If you like this video, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video. Comment on this video. All of that good stuff. And if ain't nobody else told you today, I sure enough love you and I sure enough appreciate you.